Chapter 4 Essie, she sniffed, hovering. That's a girl's name? You don't look like a girl to me. That's because it's S.C., I said, slowly reaching out to remove each of the force points, letting the tree branches collapse back in around me. Like J.D. or E.J.? Well, Essie or S.C., it certainly doesn't explain what you're doing in this tree, she retorted, and noticed the branches moving. Hey, are you doing that? Are you special? No, I'm absolutely not, I said hurriedly. Just a nosy regular, and now I'll be on my way, thank you. Just, um, got lost. You absolutely are, she said, trailing me from the outside of the tree as I started to climb down, realising I knew her as one of the girls that frequented hopscotch and jump rope on the other end of the playground. With her abilities, I bet she cheated too. And this isn't the first time I've seen you up here. I tend to keep my eyes on the sky. This is just the first time my teacher turned her back long enough for me to look. No, definitely first time I've been here, Ariel, I repeated, now practically falling from the tree in my haste, cursing as I realised my slip-up. You know my name. You've been spying on me, on us, listening to us. Who do you think you are? Stop. Stop right there or I'll report you in before you make it down the block. I'm sure the police would want to know why you aren't in school. I froze, clinging to the branch halfway down, considering my options. I could set a force point above her, one that would drag her upwards and away while I escaped, but it would likely do more harm than good. Creating a force point was kind of like kneading dough or playing with putty. It was as if I was pushing into that area of space, contorting it, stretching it downwards and letting objects fall in. The problem, however, was that anything nearby would be attracted to it, not just her. It would draw far more attention to me than she ever could by calling the police, and she might be able to fly away before she could be sucked in. I frowned, thinking quickly as she questioned me again, her voice hard. I said, what are you doing here? She repeated, whizzing in closer, sticking her head inside the leaves, a branch tearing her sleeve. Now look what you've made me do. Mother is going to be irate. I'm, well, I've only just arrived a few days ago, I said, an idea taking root in my brain. But I'm trying to determine if the academy is worthy for someone like me. My parents sent me here, you see, to live with my aunt, since schools aren't the best where I'm from, since, well, they don't exist where I'm from. Don't exist? she asked, craning her neck forward. What do you mean, don't exist? Schools are everywhere. Not when your parents are researchers in the Arctic, I said, thrusting out my chest. But I suppose you wouldn't know anything about that, would you, city girl? I wouldn't, and you wouldn't either, because it's obviously a lie. She snorted, inspecting the tear in her sleeve, trying to press the fabric near her elbow back together. Hmm, a lie. You're right, I did lie. I am special, from farther north than you've ever seen, where it's light outside for entire days at a time. Oh yeah? What type are you then? A boreal, I stated, brushing a piece of bark off my shirt. But I doubt someone from around here would be familiar with those. A boreal? she exclaimed, eyes wide. Of course I know what those are. I saw one when I was young. The city booked him out for an entire night. I've never seen a show like it. It was as if the sky came alive with colours. I suppose if you aren't used to it, it might seem pretty amazing, I responded, and started climbing down the tree again, giving her a sideways glance. Guess I'm just used to it by now. Hold it. I'm not done with you, she said. Prove it. Boreals are incredibly rare, and I'd know if one entered the city. We'd all know. Rare, but not powerful. I don't need any sort of permits. I couldn't hurt a fly. There's no need for me to enter announced. Either way, prove it, or I'm still calling the police. If you wanted a private show, you should have just asked, I drooled, 
and held up a hand, palm up towards her. I'll need to keep it small, though, and you'll have to keep it a secret. No one is supposed to know I'm here yet, since I don't start school until next week. Slowly, I coaxed one of the black orbs out from above my wrist, peeling away several strands of light from it while keeping the sphere hidden behind my hand. Light played around the inside of the enclosure, sparkling against the leaves, and Ariel's mouth fell open as strands of it danced in vibrating streams like tiny arcs of fire. Two more colours, she breathed, transfixed, practically perched in the tree now instead of floating. It's beautiful. Can't, not yet at least. That's why my parents sent me to school, to train me, and I wanted to see if this school was capable. I'm not so sure if they can keep track of all their students. Oh, they are. They are. My father knows. He can tell your parents all about it. He would love to meet you, too. He loves seeing the rarer types. You should come over for dinner and show him. Here, take this, she said, fetching a pen and paper from her side. This is my address. I'd love to introduce him to you. We'll see. I still have a few other schools to inspect, I answered. Can't make my decision until I've considered all my options. A boreal, here, she said to herself. He would be so pleased, and he'd be happy with me for bringing you. No, don't even look at the other schools. Enroll here. We'll see, I repeated, and jumped the rest of the way to the ground. I don't want to promise anything yet. In the distance, over the fence... I heard a whistle and saw Ariel turn back towards the school. I must be going. Recess is over, but keep this address, she insisted, and pushed the paper into my palm. Any time you are welcome for dinner. Any time, S.C. Any time, I answered casually, starting to walk away as she flew back over the fence. I kept a slow, wandering pace, weaving up the street letting my feet shuffle along as I peered into shop windows with my hands in my pockets. Then I turned a corner at the end of the block, lost a direct line of sight with the academy, and ran.